when I was a boy, I went with my dad to our little river to catch fish for the winter. Early in the morning, I went up in my little canoe and started gaffing fish at a riffle and throwing it up the gravel bar. My dad came along with his canoe and pulled alongside of mine. He says, my son, what are you doing? Oh, I told him, I'm gaffing fish just for the fun of it. My son, I says, never destroy fish just for the fun of it. It's not right by the great spirit. These trees in the San Bernardino National Forest are dying because of smog. The smog weakens them, then they're attacked by insects. They're taken out to try to stop the spread of the blight. Smog has been damaging food crops in Orange County near Los Angeles. In 1970, each up just a little bit, not that much. In 1972, each up a little more. And 73, we have the problem yeah. right in here. Yeah. This is going to be the end for me because I just really can't afford to be losing and losing every year. Can you imagine who's going to buy this kind of stuff in a grocery market? Who's going to buy this shape of lettuce like this? Yeah. yeah, well, that wouldn't be very much for the market. Just nothing. Just plain nothing. Smog spreads from our cities. This is Denver, Colorado. People used to come here for the pure air. We're trying to control smog, but the problem isn't just smog. It's waste, noise, and speed, and overcrowding. The problem is us. Every 15 years, our need for power doubles. Coal is power, and under the ground, we've got lots of it.
coal lies under the surface in seams that run for miles. And to get it out, miles of the country have to be gouged open. Not long ago, we used to leave it that way. And the scars in Appalachia will still be there for our great-grandchildren to wonder at. Now we've passed laws saying that after strip mining, the land must be put back the way it was. But land reclamation is not the only question. Under the rolling hills of Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota lie some of the richest coal deposits in the world. If we mine them, the region's going to change. The long, quiet hills will have power plants and more people and more prosperity. Some who live here are happy about that prospect. Some are not. Any time that you have a way of life that is good to you, it's, it's real difficult to turn loose of it and start all over again. And, and you're asking us to give up our way of life that we've known for generations. And it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to ask one to do. Give up your land because it's gonna mean more money and, and we need the heat and the energy. does something to you in the early morning when it's 10 below zero and you're, and you're holding the lines behind the horses and you can feel the cold on your face and, and the rest of you is warm and, and as you pull into the haystack, the cattle see the, the horses and the wagon and hear the jingle of the tug chains and, and they just automatically know it's time for dinner. <laughs> Personally, I'm not convinced that they can reclaim lands that are turned upside down. I'm not convinced that they can do that. And if we don't take a stand and, and try to save our existing life, there'll be a lot of generations that won't be able to take a hike in the trees and take a deep breath of fresh air and, and see the wildlife and the game and, and the birds. As we occupy more and more space, the other creatures that share the Earth with us have less and less. There are only 50 whooping cranes left on the whole Earth. Without room to breed, they're dying out. The bald eagle, our national symbol, now survives mostly in Alaska. We've driven them out of the rest of the country with our bulldozers and guns. The sea otter was once nearly wiped out by hunters. Conservation efforts saved him. 
Now, for some people, he's a pest. The problem is, he loves abalone. And so do we. I think most of the divers wouldn't mind seeing sea otters as long as they weren't endangering their living. But uh, you can imagine several thousand sea otters descending on a small abalone bed. It's, uh, it's very hard on the local industry. At Morro Bay, the uh, abalone industry was virtually wiped out by sea otters. Everything that lives on Mother Earth is precious. Even the grass that grows, we shouldn't destroy. The trees, we shouldn't destroy. They've got life. They've got life from the breath of the Great Spirit. That's what I want my children to see. Way Mother Earth was given to us. That's the way it should be. been battling this oil well blaze for 17 days and nights. That's 150,000 barrels gone up in smoke. Well, this is as big one as I've ever been on in the States, right here. And I've been driving a Caterpillar ever since I was 21 years old, and that's a long time ago. We've got to shoot this thing with about uh, 450 pounds of explosive between 75 and 80 percent strength, which we hope will shatter that thing all to pieces and put the fire up at the same time. We'll get the car through. We'll go in there. When I back that dynamite in there, that gives me a feeling that to do something that nobody else wants to do. It's uh, hard to get a cat skinner back a charge in there, and I'm only 60 feet from that charge. Really, it goes, I'll go. Of course, when uh, we shoot this now, we get off about, oh, 150, 200 feet behind a big tractor, the dozer, so that this shrapnel won't hit us when it flies. Sometimes it shoots a cab off the tractor, sometimes it shoots a whole fuel tank, shoots the air cleaner off stuff like that, but you can all replace that arm, but a man is hard to replace. Now, you can eat dynamite. It's sweet, but it gives you a terrible headache, and your heart did thumps up terrible. just like it ought to. There was a little puddle of oil burning in the corner and um, that gas was escaping and it just reignited. Anything that can go wrong is done it on this one. Has there been a bastard for you? Oh.
This land was torn up for its coal. Now we're replanting and reclaiming it. We're the problem, but if we put our minds to it, we can also be the solution. We've just got to decide the kind of world we really want. Look at the sea slug, all over here. The lake moving. Come on and see how this thing looks like. Okay? Be a gentle. Be a gentle. Come on, come on. Here. Hold it, you hold it now, you hold it. Okay? Thank you, son. Thank you for your light. Come again tomorrow. Have mercy on us human beings. That was my dad's way of thanking nature. We thank the sun for its light and its warmth. We thank Mother Nature. We thank the Great Spirit for everything that he has given us human beings. <laughs>